Okay, recording. Princess Minuet stared up at the name on the front door of her uncle's castle. Is my uncle really horrible? She asked Friar Tim. His enemy certainly thinks it, said Friar Tim. He lifted the great door knocker and let it fall. A moment later, the door flew open. I don't want it! Boomed the forest, the horrible. Please, sir, said Friar Tim. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm sent by your brother, the king. <clears throat> said Horace. What does the royal pigwig want now? He sent you this. Friar Tim stepped aside, and there stood Minuet. That? Roared Horace. Why, that's a child! Precisely, said the friar. It is your niece, Minuet. The king has the flu. He asks that you look after Minuet until he is well. That's impossible! Blustered Horus. I have dragons to slay, armies to vanquish. Sorry, said Friar Tim. He gave Minuet a little push, said goodbye, and left. What? This can't be! shouted Horus. Minuet stared at the high stone walls and leering gargoyles. It was nothing like home. She sniffled. Horace glared at her. Minuet began to sob. Great galloping gargoyles! Horace bellowed. What's wrong? I miss my daddy. Oh, daddy fatty. I can do anything that swellhead can do. Come! Let's slay a dragon! He lifted Minuet up on his horse and rode off. At last, they heard a roar. Here's a dragon now! shouted Sir Horace. Down you go! He lowered Minuet from the saddle. She grabbed his sword. What are you doing? He cried, his eyes on the approaching dragon. Give that back! Hurry! Minuet picked up the stick and put it in Horace's hand. Holding the stick high, Sir Horace charged. Flames burst from the dragon's mouth, and smoke filled the air. There was a great deal of roaring and shrieking. A slightly scorched Horace charged out of the smoke. This is a stick! I know! I could have been killed! Sir Horace roared. So could the dragon. And I still miss my daddy. Oh, daddy ratty! Sir Horace blustered. Your daddy couldn't fight a dragonfly. Come on, let's vanquish an army. He scooped up Minuet and looked off again. Over hill and dale they rode until they came upon a vast army. Ah, here we go, said Sir Horace. He lowered Minuet to the ground and raced into the valley. Minuet heard flashing swords thundering hooves. She saw the great army flee into the hills. Sir Horace rode back with a flagstaff in his hand. For you, my lady, he said. Minuet unfurled the flag and looked at it. Uncle, she said. This is our flag. You just vanquished our own army. Sir Horace lifted his visor and squinted. <laughs> Oh, drag! He mumbled. I miss my daddy. Minuet sniffled. Daddy Schmatty. Your daddy couldn't vanquish an army of ants. Let's go find some damsels in distress. 
East and west and north and south they rode to the farthest corners of the kingdom, but there were no damsels to be found. Discouraged, Sir Horace sat down beneath a tree for some lunch and a short nap. While Horace snored, Minuet gazed at a tall stone tower in the distance. Away from her uncle, she crept. Across the meadow, she ran. And up the tower stairs, she climbed. Minuet cried. Sir Horace sprang to his feet. A damsel! He cried. Fear not, my lady. Help is on the way. He leapt to his horse, charged across the meadow, scaled the tower walls, and hurled himself through the window. <laughs> you could have taken the stairs, said Minuet. Sir Horace stared. You! He cried. I thought I heard a damsel in distress. Uncle, said Minuet. I am a damsel in distress. Horace looked doubtful. How so? He asked. I miss my daddy, shouted Minuet. No daddy ready, shouted Sir Horace. He grabbed Minuet's hand and dragged her back out to the meadow. Just tell me one thing your daddy does better than I do, he demanded. He hugs. He what? Sir Horace choked. He hugs. That's all I want. Not a dragon, not an army, not a damsel in distress, just a hug. <clears throat> said Horace. We can't have that. I'm far too hard and prickly for hugging. You could take your armor off. Take my... Are you mad? I haven't had my armor off in public since I was a knave. But my daddy... Minuet began. Horace rolled his eyes. Oh, all right. He barked. He took off his helmet, his breastplate, his mail suit, and his gloves. He squinted in the sun. I don't think I like this, he said. Sit down, said Minuet. Sir Horace sat. Minuet crawled into his lap. Now, hug. Very carefully, Horace put his arms around her. <laughs> Minuet snuggled against his chest. Thank you, Uncle Horace, she said. Sir Horace blushed. No one will ever call me Horace the Horrible again. Is that so bad? Asked Minuet. Sir Horace considered. Without his armor on, he could hear the birds singing and smell the meadow flowers. He could feel the sun on his shoulders and the cool breeze in his hair. He hugged Minuet tighter. Maybe not, he said. Yeah.